The Mediterranean Basin is geologically and culturally one of the most diverse regions in the world. From its warm and sunny climate to the ancient and modern civilizations that have risen and fallen over millennia, it is truly one of the unique regions in the world. Apart from its climate and historical heritage, the Mediterranean is also of very high social and economic importance due to the Mediterranean Sea, which covers an area of approximately 2.5 million square kilometers across 22 countries and three continents, Africa, Asia, and Europe. The sea has a 46,000 kilometer coastline and extends almost 4,000 kilometers from west to east and 1,500 kilometers from north to south. In comparison, it is 10 times the size of the United Kingdom and almost 6 times the size of California. The Mediterranean Sea joins with the Atlantic Ocean through a narrow body of water called the Strait of Gibraltar, which separates Spain and southern Europe from Morocco in northwesternmost Africa. It is 50 kilometers long from west to east and between 300 and 900 meters deep. The western side of the strait between Cape Trafalgar and Cape Spartel has a width of about 42 kilometers, and the eastern side between Europa Point and the Spanish exclave of Ceuta is 23 kilometers wide. The shortest distance across the strait is between the small Spanish town of Tarifa and Point Sires in Morocco. Surprisingly, it has a length of just 14 kilometers. The Gibraltar Strait is one of the busiest waterways in the world. It is the only natural link between the Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea and so has a direct impact on global trade. More than 300 ships cross the strait every day for trade and transportation purposes, about one ship every five minutes. Besides being an important shipping route, the strait is also a meeting point for nature lovers. Here you can observe whales and dolphins as well as migratory birds. Given their close proximity to one another, one would wonder if a proposal to build a bridge between Africa and Europe across the Strait of Gibraltar had ever been made. From a commercial and social point of view, this project seems to make perfect sense. With the globalization of trade, the establishment of such a link would stimulate commerce and tourism between Europe and Africa, in addition to generating income for the two countries of Morocco and Spain through toll payments. Tens of thousands of jobs would also be created during both the construction and exploitation phase. Since its first conception back in the 1800s, several engineers have brought forward designs for a bridge across the strait, each with various alignments and unique structural configurations. In 1996, Professor Tung Yen Lin, an outstanding Chinese-American structural engineer who was awarded the National Medal of Science in 1986, made a proposal for a crossing which captured the attention of the world. His design featured a bridge of 14 kilometers in length which extended from Point Oliveros in Spain to Point Sires in Morocco. It had very deep piers, towers that were 910 meters tall, and a span of 5,000 meters, more than twice the length of the span of the 1915 Kanakale Bridge in Turkey, which currently holds the world record. Another design was published in 2004 by Eugene Tsui, an internationally recognized architect and visionary designer. His revolutionary concept would involve building a 5-kilometer-long artificial floating island in the middle of the strait. It would be equipped with wind-powered and underwater turbines, which would potentially create enough energy capable of powering most of Morocco and southern Spain. The bridge would be 24 lanes wide, including 16 lanes for automobile traffic and 8 lanes for trucks and buses. Four standard and two high-speed train tracks would also be incorporated to complete the motor vehicle accommodations. The bridge would be partially submerged to a maximum depth of 200 meters to allow the continued use of the strait for trade and transportation purposes. The project had a price tag of $10 billion and if completed was expected to instantly become the greatest tourist destination on Earth. Despite the numerous proposals, building a bridge across the strait has proven to be a task much more difficult than one would think. The most noteworthy hindrance to its construction is the depth of the water in the strait. Although only 14 kilometers wide at the narrowest point, the Strait of Gibraltar is an astonishing 300 to 900 meters deep. The shallowest point of the strait has a depth equivalent to the height of the Eiffel Tower in France, and the deepest point is enough to fully submerge the tallest skyscraper in the world. In comparison, the Milo Viaduct Rail Bridge in France, the tallest bridge in the world, has piles which extend 343 meters from the ground to the road deck. Other than being no shorter than 300 meters, the pyres of a Gibraltar bridge would also need to be strong enough to withstand any ship collisions which may occur due to heavy marine traffic. Furthermore, a bridge across the strait would be placed right around the Azores Gibraltar Fault, a product of the complex interactions between the African, Eurasian, and Iberian tectonic plates. The fault line has been the site of large magnitude earthquakes and tsunamis in past years, which would cause major structural damage to the bridge. 
Due to its location, the strait is also commonly used for illegal immigration of African populations who seek to begin new lives in Europe. Given the already high number of illegal boat immigrants in Spain, concerns have been raised about how the bridge would act as a stimulant for these illegal human flows. Perhaps a tunnel dug under the seabed could serve as a suitable alternative to a bridge. This idea dates as far back as the 1800s, a time when France and Spain were looking for ways to transfer wealth from colonial Morocco to Europe. However, the first modern proposal came in 1930 and was made by the Spanish government, which appointed a team of expert engineers to investigate the viability of such a link. Surveys revealed that the technology available would make tunneling nearly impossible due to the fact that the material under the strait is made of extremely hard rock. Laying the tunnel on the seafloor would be just as impractical taking into account the earthquakes that could occur around the Azores-Gibraltar Fault. In 1979, a research company from Spain and another from Morocco were appointed specifically to carry out studies on a fixed link across the strait. The joint committee suggested that the most suitable connection would be a submarine tunnel similar to the one which connects England to France across the Strait of Dover. The project will involve submerging three parallel waterproof tunnels at a depth below all surface shipping and at a point where the surface currents are minimal. The link will be made up of two single-track railway tunnels on each side and a technical services gallery in the middle to facilitate operation and maintenance. The three tunnels will be 42 kilometers long, 27 kilometers of which will be submerged under the sea at a maximum depth of 475 meters. They'll connect the Moroccan port of Tangier with the municipality of Tarifa where the strait is 29 kilometers wide, and will accommodate trains carrying people or goods, as well as high-speed and special trains. Despite several reminders of this project on different occasions, any significant action to begin the construction of the tunnel is yet to be taken. However, many optimists believe that with the advancement in technology, availability of funds, and improvement in diplomatic relations between the governments of Spain and Morocco, the intercontinental link that has been dreamt of since the 19th century will soon be brought to fruition. In October 2022, the Spanish government released a draft budget for the following year in which €750,000 was allocated to the Spanish research firm to finance new studies on the tunnel. Latest reports state that construction is scheduled to begin in 2030, and annual flows of 13 million tons of goods and 12 million passengers across the strait are now expected by 2050. But until then, the Strait of Gibraltar will continue to serve as a boundary between the two continents of Africa and Europe.